What's happening with the Ontario real estate market? Are all markets going down? Are all markets going down equally? Well, in this video, I'm going to cover off a Desjardins article, which covers off what's happening in Ontario as well as Canada. And make sure you stay until the end because not all markets are the same. Hi everybody, my name is Connie Sarvanandan and I'm a real estate agent and investor here in Toronto and the GTA. And in this video, we are going to go through a Desjardins article that will go through a lot of detail. I'm actually going to cover it off in a blog TO article that does the highlights, but I'm also going to link to the overall article from Desjardins, which is quite in depth and shows a lot of charts and graphs. Um, and I think what's great about the Desjardins article is that they are pretty neutral in what they are expecting in that there is definitely reasons why the market should be going down, but there's also different pockets that it's not affected as much as you would think. So let's get straight to the article. Okay, so there are two articles that I'm going to be referring to. The first is the Desjardins article, which is Canadian Residential Real Estate Outlooks. The housing market may be, have begun to cool, but there's no need to panic. And then there's also the blog TO article, Home Prices Expected to Plummet Across Ontario, But Toronto Should Remain Red Hot. And this article from blog TO is based off of the Desjardins article. Um, and I will link to both of them below. I'm not going to go through full details of the Desjardins article because as you can see here, it's pretty detailed. It has a lot of great information. If you are finding this information um, valuable and you want me to go in depth, I'm definitely open to that, but I'm going to try and do the highlights. So the first thing I want to do is just read the first paragraph and then go through it. Um, but again, if you want me to go through detail of the rest of it, I'm happy to do that too. Um, so the story of Canada's housing market is well known. In the run-up to COVID-19 pandemic, Canada posted world-leading gains. Then the lockdown and remote work sent Canadians to far-flung places looking for more space. This caused prices to increase almost exponentially in communities that had been largely insulated from the rapid escalation in home values in Canada's largest cities. So that first part says, during the COVID, our prices went so high that we were leading the world with our price gains. Um, us in the U.S. were actually fairly high. Um, and then when we had the lockdowns and we could do remote work, what happened was Canadians started to go to places that you would not normally go to because, you know, you had to commute to the major cities. So as a result, what you were seeing is that these remote places had exponential growth that they had never seen before. Um, and so that has been causing a lot of price escalation in those communities. Now, as life begins to return to normal and the Bank of Canada tightens monetary policy to bring down decades high inflation, the Canadian housing market is beginning to roll over. Nationally, this can mean a decline in the average price of 15% from the February 2022 peak by December 2023. So what they're saying is now that companies are asking people to go back to work and you have the Bank of Canada raising interest rates, um, you know, they raised it in at the beginning of the year, they've raised it uh, again in June, they were going to raise it again in July. And so they're, they're definitely raising overall rates and it's affecting affordability. And so what you're seeing is the housing market reacting. And what they're saying is that you're going to see a drop in prices from February 2022. So February 2022 was the peak and we're definitely going to see a drop in prices and that um, drop is going to go at what they're predicting is this is what's going to happen by December 2023. Um, and the adjustment will most likely be acute in provinces and communities that experienced the fastest rise in prices during the pandemic. That said, we don't expect home prices to fall to their pre-pandemic level 
or trend in any province before the end of 2023, with average home values remaining as much as 25% above the December 2019 mark of the end of the year. So basically what they're saying is, yes, there's going to be a correction and um, you're going to see the biggest corrections in markets that rose the most. But that said, nobody's expecting that before de- December 2023 that the prices are going to go drop below the pre-pandemic uh, pricing. Um, that's not what they're expecting at all. Um, and they're actually saying that the prices will remain 25% above the December 2019 mark at the end of next year. So by the end of 2023, we're going to be 25% higher than where we were in December 2019. Um, So that's the overall picture. Let's look at a little bit more detail. Okay, so some of the detailed graphs. First of all, you're going to see that Canada leads major economies in pandemic era home price gains. So the green line here is Canada. And then the gray line is the U.S. and then red is Europe. Um, The other green line is U.K. and then you have Japan. So what you'll see is Canada. We rose faster than the U.S. and now both uh, Canada and the U.S. are um, uh, showing the gains. And this is all for uh, what's been happening as far as the pandemic um, goes. So we are leading the uh, world when it comes to uh, the price gains during the pandemic. The next graph shows that Canadian housing market has likely peaked. So um, the green indicates overall sales, the number of sales, and then the gray indicates pricing. And what you'll see with both is they peaked. And what they're saying is that the peak was in February, and then it's starting to come down. And then here it says home sales and prices are expected to correct but not collapse. So this is their forecast for what's going to happen in 2023. So if this is the peak in February of 2022, this is where we are now. They are expecting us to come down in pricing and come down in the number of sales. But as you can see for the pricing, if this is pre-pandemic, they're not expecting the pricing to go to lower than the pre-pandemic, which is... Um, you know, if you look at the pandemic started around here, they're not expecting the prices to go there. So uh, overall, for sure, and this is for Canada overall, not just uh, Ontario, that's what they are predicting. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. It really helps us out. And if you have any comments, good or bad, please write them below because it really tells us what kind of content you're looking for. And finally, if you have any real estate needs in Toronto or the GTA, feel free to call, text, email, or WhatsApp, and we'll be sure to take care of you. And if you want to talk to me directly, feel free to make an appointment. My calendar link is below. Okay, so the next two charts that I want to show you in this are um, the biggest price swings in Ontario will be outside of the GTA. So the light green represents December to the peak, which was February 2022. So this is the price gains in these regions. And then the dark green is what they're saying is going to happen from the peak to December 2023. So there are predictions on what's going to happen as far as pricing goes um, for that time. And um, so what you'll see is that in Ontario, the price gains were 61%, the price declines are going to be 18%. Now, in Toronto specifically, the price gains were 49%, and the price declines were are predicted to be 15%. And then in the rest of Ontario, as you'll see, is the price gains were dramatic. They were 71%, um, and then the price declines are going to be bigger than Toronto, so 20%. So this is where Desjardins, and that's where Blog TO got their title, is that, you know, Toronto didn't experience as big a gain as other uh, territories outside of Toronto. And so as a result, they're also, and as a result, they're not expecting as big a decline. Um, and then the rest of Ontario, you're going to see that the decline is, um, the gain was bigger and the decline is more. Now, What's really interesting is this chart over here, which um, shows you uh, which 
uh, markets are going to decline the most. So what they're saying in this article is that we expect the housing market correction to be led by a decline in sales activity and prices in the smaller centers outside of major, major urban areas. We think the prices will fall in most communities that saw the biggest price increases during the pandemic and therefore the most erosion in affordability. This means communities with a, in a few hours drive of Toronto are likely to see sales activities and prices cool faster as borrowing costs rise and commuting becomes more common. Proposed legislation to end blind bidding and other practices believed to be leading causes of recent price appreciation should also bring down the prices somewhat. Um, so basically what they're saying is the smaller communities experience the most amount of growth. They will also experience the most amount of decline. And this is going to become even more evident as, you know, your borrowing costs are going up um, and you're going to see more commuting because people are going back to work and they are going to have to go back to offices in some cases. Um, and so, you know, a two hour drive with gas the way that it is, is not necessarily feasible. Um, and then also there's legislation in place to end things like blind bidding and other things that they believe has increased prices overall. So overall they're expecting um, prices to come down. Now, um, what they do say again is, but again, we don't anticipate average home prices in any region to fall be below their pre-COVID starting points due by and large to high levels of international migration and ongoing hybrid work arrangements. So they're saying even though you're going to see this shift especially in markets outside of Toronto, nobody's expecting the prices to drop to pre-pandemic levels. They're still going to be up versus pre-pandemic. Um, and they're saying that's because of international migration. So lots of people still wanting to come into Canada. And then, of course, the ongoing hybrid work situation, meaning that, yes, there are people that are going to have to go back to the office, but not everybody's going to have to go back to the office. And there's a lot of people who can work sometimes at home or all the time at home that didn't exist pre-pandemic. So it's never going to go back to pre-pandemic because the same conditions don't exist. Um, so let's look at this chart that they have a little bit closer to see where they expect the greatest rise and fall. Okay, so like I said, we're going to go back to the blog TO article um, and Desjardins predicts that the unsustainable growth will see smaller communities prices plummet this year, start, stating that it's difficult to envision a housing markets of smaller communities maintaining their unprecedented pandemic price gains as people return to in-person work on a more regular basis. And what they're saying is Bancroft, Ontario is predicted to see the largest decline in the entire province. Uh, Desjardins is forecasting prices to plummet from the 185% price gains registered since December 2019. So for those of you that don't know Ban Bancroft, uh, Bancroft was known originally as cottage country. Um, it's about two and a, it's about two and a half hours from Toronto. It's northeast of Toronto, about two and a half hours drive. And it saw price gains of 185%. So yes, you're going to definitely see, a, you will not see those price gains again. And that's going to definitely plummet. Um, from that. But, but again, remember, they're not saying that it's going to go back to pricing less than December 2019, but it's definitely not going to be staying at where it was before. Average home prices in Toronto increased about roughly 50% in that same 2019 to 2022 period, while prices in surrounding communities absolutely exploded, jumping by over 70% to over 825000 these factors have helped Toronto and other Ontario cities ascend or descend, depending on your perspective, to among the least affordable in the country as the first quarter as of the first quarter of 2022. 
Um, and don't expect that to change anytime soon as Desjardins map of Ontario is a wall of red shading indicating, indicating price declines surrounding a small pocket of gray representing the GTA and the unlikelihood of any substantial decline in home prices. So what they're showing is that these are the ones that are going to have the smallest decline and these are the ones that are going to have the greatest decline. So Bancroft is expected to decline, um, Chatham, Windsor, Tilsonburg. These are all um, in the West, um, uh, Quinty. So again, these would have also been markets that would have had huge gains. And then the ones that are going to have the smallest decline, Thunder Bay, Timmins, York, GTA, Oakville, Milton, Mississauga, Ottawa. Um, so uh, what, what they're saying is while Thunder Bay is expected to see the smallest decline in any city in Ontario and Timmins not far behind, the greater Golden Horseshoe region takes the next four spots on the list with York region, the GTA area, Oakville, Milton, and Mississauga. The Desjardins report suggests that the proposed legislation to end blind bidding and other practices believed to be leading causes of the recent price appreciation should bring down home prices somewhat. So overall, they're saying like these are the ones that, you know, you're going to see the darker red are the ones where you're going to see the biggest decline. And then what you'll see is the GTA and surrounding is not going to have as big a decline. So what does this mean overall? Okay, so in conclusion, first of all, I just wanted to point out the Desjardins article. It's quite detailed, lots of graphs, and I'm going to link it below. So if you want to look at it in more detail, feel free. Uh, but I am going to do what the Desjardins' conclusion is to all of this. And it's really a summary of what uh, they've been saying all along. So conclusion, it looks as though the Canadian housing market correction we expected has begun, though it's still concentrated in a small number of markets. But there's no need to panic. While the correction in the range of 10 to 20 percent is likely by the end of the next year in most provinces, average home prices are expected to remain above the pre-COVID level and trend. As such, the anticipated correction should bring more balance to the Canadian housing market. So again, they've said this throughout the article. The, basically, what they're saying is the housing market correction has begun and it's going to be more acute in these markets where you saw the greatest gains, like Bancroft. However, that said, even with a correction, um, they are not expecting the prices um, to drop to pre-pandemic level. So they're not expecting the prices to go below the December 2019 pricing. And um, this is all for predictions by the end of December 2023. So that's their overall conclusion. And the big thing that they're saying in all of this is that it's going to bring more balance to the Canadian market, which is a welcome relief across the board. Um, because a more balanced market means that hopefully more affordability will come out of all of this and there'll be this will be good news for everybody both buyers and sellers because it won't be the craziness that we've experienced in the last two years again if you have any specific questions about either one of these articles feel free to ask or make a comment below because i'd love to hear what your perspective is on all of this Thanks for watching. I hope you found it interesting and informative. And if you have any comments, good or bad, please link them below because that's how we know if you are finding our content relevant. And if we need to adjust, we definitely will. And if you have any real estate needs, feel free to call, text, email, or WhatsApp, or make an appointment directly with me. My calendar link is below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.